Hey folks, it's Harry, and I'm here with New Comic Book Saturday. I'm actually filming this on a Wednesday, so it's Wednesday the 19th of October, and this is going to be the first part. I'll be filming the second part later on in the month, I want to say on the 29th when I pick up my comics from the comic store, but today, well, last night to be specific, I received my first package from DCBS. So the uh, discount comic book service. And I was very impressed, very impressed by quite a lot. The packaging of it was amazing. And just every, every bit of the experience was good. So opening up the package, I was immediately greeted by foam packing. So thick foam packing that actually kept the books in place. The foam itself was molded to the shape of the books. Uh, inside the book, inside where the books were, the books were actually in a plastic baggie with cardboards, and then each book was individually bagged and boarded, which was an additional charge, but I think it was worth just having that. I may or may not continue with the individually bagged and boarded books in the future, but I figure for now I want to see what it's like, and I'll just do it and if I don't like it, then I'll stop, and I'll go back to bagging and boarding my own. So I wanted to go through what I got last night, which I opened this morning. And the first thing that I want to take a look at is this amazing MODOK shirt. So yeah, this, this I loved. I saw it in the previews, and I immediately knew I had to have it. And I ordered it, and as I told Sarah, it was sort of my test of any comic book store that I started going to, to first order an item of apparel from previews and see if it actually comes in. Because every comic store that I went to, ever, would not manage to fulfill any apparel orders. So I have, I've placed orders with every store that I've gone to, and every store had failed on that front, except for DCBS. DCBS got my MODOK shirt, so that's awesome. So aside from cool wearables, let's go to the desktop and see what we've got going on. All right, so we had some minor little difficulties when it came to the switch from the traditional view to the desktop. So this is actually a couple days later, and I have my entire comic haul for the month. So let's begin with what I got through DCBS. So first up, we have my return to reading DC Comics with Batman One Bad Day, The Riddler number one. So this is only a one shot. There's not going to be a Riddler number two. This tells a really cool story. It tells a little bit of the Riddler's background. It gives him some very unique challenges and it has a beautiful art style. So I've already read this one and I gotta say this was a very dark moving broody Batman story. This is the exact kind of Batman that I like and it really goes into some deep, dark places with the Riddler. And honestly, I'm here for it. I give this book a very high, high, high rating. Uh, this is a four out of five easy for a Batman. The cover price is a little on the higher side at $7.99, but it is a thicky. It's shorter than most trade paperbacks, but it's a nice long story with good character development and some very beautiful art. Like this, this painterly style that they have in here, it's very appealing to me. Especially a lot of the comics that I liked in the 2000s and ni late 90s, early 2000s, they had this sort of painter style, and I really enjoyed that. So, and again, this is Batman One Bad Day, The Riddler. And it really goes in, it really is a, a great Batman story. And talking about great Batman stories, I also got 
Batman, One Bad Day, Two-Face, number one. Which, again, is only going to be a one-shot, to my knowledge. And this one follows Harvey Dent, Two-Face. He's at a point where he believes that he's got Two-Face under control again, or at least Bruce Wayne, Batman, believes that Harvey has Two-Face under control again. And, again, we see this is a different artist but a still unique and beautiful art style this one is i think very striking in the use of color and in here we see a very humanized version of harvey and two-face and we get to see some of his relationship with his family we get to see some of his relationship with his his uh, significant other, but a lot with his father. And there's similar issues at play in the Riddler story with the sort of daddy issue things. And there's also, in this one in particular, it talks a bit about Batman's own sort of urge to protect the younger members of the Bat family. So this was a, a really good... Batman story, uh, once again. I think that I enjoyed the Riddler a little bit more, but this one was really astounding. And this whole near the end sequence, it reminds me of Franco Francavilla's art. And, you know, I really love me some Franco Francavilla. So, again, this is a $7.99 cover price, so it's a little on the more expensive side. It does have the nice shiny embossed cover so the if you can see I don't know if you can see it very well the actual art of Two-Face himself is shinier than the rest of the uh, the book so very enjoyable Batman Two-Face always a good pair or trio Dark Ride number one this is right up my alley if the art is beautiful and cartoony. It starts out black and white with a very Walt Disney-esque character who eventually will go on to open a theme park which has a horror sort of hellish theme to it. And it seems pretty obvious where the story is going to go. Uh, it follows the first day of a young man who's recently been employed by the park and he's a huge fan of the park and it introduces all the main characters and everything in a very natural way and this this was a good introduction to a new series the colors are very nice very good color design specifically right here with these reds and blues and again the art style this sort of cartoony it reminds me a little bit of afterlife with archie on the interiors and um, you know this just has really good feeling to it and i am a hundred percent on board with this and i love the little devil mascot so this is a mature rated book as you can kind of figure from the art <laughs> that has whizzed by uh it's a 3.99 cover price so not too pricey, about normal, and this guy is also kind of a kind of a thick book, so it's not a short short read, but it's a good read, and I really liked it, and it has a nice cardstock cover, I like that. It's got good qu good quality production value, and speaking of good quality production value and thick boys. Miracle Man number zero, bringing us back into Marvel's Age of Miracle Man. This is the first peek into the Silver Age story arc that's coming up. And we find that Miracle Man himself is feeling sort of blase about the world and everything. And he starts reading some comics about himself and about other things. And so we then enter into a bunch of little short stories that are all multiverse miracle men, more or less. I don't know how this is going to play into the overall storyline of the uh, of the Silver Age, but I'm intrigued. I particularly like this last story, which had 
the author coming face to face with characters he created. They talk about how, a, you know, in as a writer, as a creator, the things that you create end up in somebody else's universe. And I've always loved that idea as a author myself. And um, I, I, I really enjoyed most of these stories, the last one in particular. And you get a nice little preview of Silver Age number one. I really like the, the, the ink work here. That looks very nice. So back on it with Miracle Man. And I am very excited. And this is the, the Terry Dodgson cover, which I really loved this cover. It has a very Art Nouveau feeling to it, particularly with those flesh tones on the, on the characters, and um, as well as with the uh, border that's going on here. Very nice. Uh, again, good production value, kind of thick book. And this guy here, he was five ninety nine, cover price. So expensive book <laughs> uh, haul from DCBS. Those, those are all the ones that I got through DCBS. So next, I had gone to one of our local shops, uh, or well, I'll start with my regular store. So I went to Green Dragon, which is my regular store, which I'm going to be leaving soon. And I got the following books. I got Beware the Eye of Odin, number four, with its $5 price tag. Uh, same art that we've been seeing. We have the same cartoony Disney-ish style with some nice gore and all that sort of thing. Uh, got some really cool things happening in here. So I haven't read this one yet. Uh, from here on out, it's all stuff I haven't read yet. But I can say that from the first three issues of Beware the Eye of Odin, this series has really caught my eye and has been really good. I am not, not uh, excited about this series ending. I really want more. And I believe this is going to be the final issue. However, as I look at this back cover and I see the main characters fighting against a dragony thing, I don't think it's going to be. Maybe there's going to be more to it, but we'll find out. Uh, as we get to the end of this series. And again, if you see anything that you're really curious about, just let me know in the comments so that we can um, take a deeper dive in any of these. Because as, as a haul video, this is kind of just an overview of what I think just at first glance. And sometimes I have more to say, and sometimes I don't. But anyhow, end after end, number two from Vault Comics. This has been a, the, the number one was a good introduction to the series. It's all about what happens when you die and the world between the living and the dying. So it's very interesting. It reminds, so the, the limbo state that our main character in, is in uh, reminds me somewhat of what it must be like to be in Valhalla, uh, to have the eternal war going on. And, you know, because because in in Norse myth, you know, the, the war is always going on and every day you go fight it and every day you get to rest afterwards and enjoy your life. But, uh, well, your afterlife. But, yeah, so this is, a, again, another nice production from Vault Comics. Uh, this guy's got a five dollar cover price. Part two, The Everyday China. We're all the heroes of our own stories, and though his life has ended, Walt's story has only just begun. With Grink as his guide, Walt travels into the unknown to retrieve a mystical relic. But when he falters, a fellow human warrior illuminates a dark truth. To wear the hero's mantle, in the end after end, you must seize it. So, it kind of gives you an idea of what's going on in here. So, uh, I really like this one. The cover I'm so-so on, once I read it, I'm sure that this will make more sense. But from the first peek at it, the face makeup that this character is wearing doesn't scream to me sense. But it probably will once I've actually read the book. And moving on over to Death Dealer. Frank Rosetta's Death Dealer. Uh, this is the number five. I believe we're getting close to the end of the first storyline. 
once again, my local comic book store has that uh, I've been going to that I'm leaving has given me not the cover I ordered. But I do like this cover. This cover is not bad. It's a nice wraparound cover, which I think that's pretty cool. And again, we see our adventure adventures with Death Dealer once again. So, story thus far, while Kerr the Cursed Barbarian is literally hell-bent on sa saving the soul of the child that he damned, the sorceress seeks out more allies for the coming war. So at the end of the previous issue, Kerr has lost the child that he pretty much was, had been running after since uh, issue number one, and this is now the start of the next chapter of things. And we have the same art that we've been seeing, has a little bit of cheesecakey moments, but nowhere near what you see in some of the Dynamite comics and stuff like that. So we have this cool no, the that this here this screams Frank Frazetta, a hundred percent. That that looks like one of his paintings. I wonder if it's a if it's a very specific quote. But, yeah. And then at the back, we do have the same thing we saw in the previous issue, where we get to see the actual covers. Yeah, see, this that's the one that I wanted. I wanted the Wolf Mother album cover cover. Because <laughs> this is, this was, the uh, Wolf Mother used this one as, as an album cover. And I really like the band. And they have the toy version. The painted one over here. Uh, the toy version's really cute, really cool. As as a person who enjoys uh, vintage toys, I do enjoy those designs. But so yeah, so there we are with more Death Dealer. This is a series I enjoy. If you like D and D ish stuff, you might like this. It's not a bad, not a bad choice, not a bad pickup. So we're moving over to Grimm number five with a cover price of six dollars because he's foil. Uh, so all of the ones that I, all of the issues of Grimm that I have, except for number two, I believe, are the foil covers because number two, Green Dragon did not manage to get for me uh, in an undamaged state. So, so much for that. Uh, so here in Grimm, we have a Grim Reaper who has been seen by mortals and now she has been going off on a quest to figure out why and lo and behold she doesn't have any memories of how she died and that was a curious thing so she managed to actually find her memories in the previous issue and very intriguingly she was stillborn and that's why she didn't remember and that I thought was very interesting. And I'm looking forward to seeing where the story goes from here. So we got some really, again, really neat art. She's gonna meet death and have some conversation. I think that she's gonna become the new big Grim Reaper is, is the way that this is gonna end. But I will not, uh, I'm gonna just flip through real quick cause I don't wanna see too much of where this goes. I believe this is getting close to the end of the first storyline. I know that, I believe it was number six is coming next. I'm not sure if they have more coming up, but I believe they do. Because from what I, what I recall, uh, when I was looking at previews really quickly this morning, there was a Grim 7, if I'm not mistaken. So, Grim, very good. I'm into that. Illusion Witch, book four. Uh, so from Sumerian Comics, and this is the three ninety nine, not too bad, cover A. I really liked the sort of uh, Hindu goddess look of this cover. And this, this cover, all the covers in this series really sold me on the series more than the series itself. Um, we have our main character is, try, is, is sort of in this, uh, she's been pulled into this other world of magic. And she's supposed to be a savior, and she's working on it. And uh, yeah, we're seeing the storyline continue. There's, I'm not super thrilled overall. Uh, we do have an epilogue going on in here, so I think that this is the end of the storyline. Uh, I won't be following another um, 
story arc, if there's any more. I think that I've I've kind of had enough. And I'm just looking at the back here. We got a, a advertisement for what appears to be a Smashing Pumpkins related comic, which is not really timely, but maybe it is. Uh, maybe they have a new album coming out. But, uh, but yeah, so Illusion Witch, passable. The covers are really nice. The story itself is okay. Uh, I'm hoping for a good ending if this is the end. And I feel like it is. And if it's the total end, I'm not upset. And that's kind of what I have to say about that. Magic Order 3, number 3. We're going to have a focus on the kids in this one, it looks like. Um, this series has been good so far. And we have just more. I think we're going we're gonna to see more of the, uh, the family member that's stuck on the lighthouse there. And it looks the art in this one looks a little different. It looks a little more. The lines look thicker and things look more cartoony than I recall from the previous one. Especially looking at this, this right here, this panel. So we're probably going to see more of the the Magic Order world come into focus. I really enjoyed what they did with Uncle Edgar in the previous issue. I just really hope that they pull into focus a lot more with the characters and a lot less with the plot and storyline. Because with comics, the plot is good. It's good to have good plot, but it's even better to have great characters. And I feel like Magic Order is missing that right now. They don't have really characters that grab you. And perhaps this will be a turning point. Again, we're going to be focused on the kids, so maybe that's where the focus is going to be. Uh, but with a cover price of $3.99, if you're not already a big Magic Order fan, I don't know if this is the series, this is the, uh, series that's going to grab you, the third one. The first two were really good. The third one I've been enjoying, but it definitely does not grab me as much as the previous two and it's starting to feel very surfacey so it feels like a half produced movie i think is the best way to put it and when i was speaking with one of my friends they're saying it, it almost feels like they're just putting it in a place where a tv series in the future is going to fill in some of the holes so who knows so last from my, my haul from Green Dragon for the month is Pentagram of Horror 505, Red Before Black. And again, we have the same really cool red and black art style that we've been seeing throughout Pentagram of Horror. Lots of gore, lots of this like horrible stuff. And this is going to be the end of the series. It's been a horror anthology, I think think that there's probably a loose connection between all of them and I want to reread it all together to see if there's any common narrative thread that really works together. Uh, this is a $5.99 cover price. The entire series being five issues, that's uh, about 30 bucks for the whole series. Nice production. It has cardstock cover, nice pages great art. It's, I think, a reasonable, uh, I don't want to call it investment, a reasonable purchase. I don't think that this is really an investment. Uh, I don't imagine that this series is going to be something that's going to turn into a big demand on the collector's market years and years and years from now. I think that's going to get forgotten, and that'll be that. Um, Black Caravan, uh, a imprint of Scout Comics, might do more with this. I would enjoy more. I actually would enjoy if it had more of a flowing narrative, I think. But I've, I've enjoyed this. And I look forward to seeing the, the final, this final installment of it. And I really love this metal mask that this, it appears to be either extremely burnt person or person made of maggots is wearing. Uh, it reminds me of Doctor Doom. And I love Doctor Doom. So yeah, so that's Pentagram of Horror 5. So I also went to our local store, Rubber Chicken Comics, because 
my uh, Green Dragon did not have Creep Show number one for me, and I was concerned that they might not get Creep Show number one for me. So, thwomp, Creep Show number one. It's not the cover I wanted. It's the cover that they had. I did not want to miss this because I really wanted to get the Creep Show comic, and I don't want to miss the number one. I really enjoyed the Creep Show. Um, what do you call it? Uh, movie series. I haven't watched any. I believe that there's a TV series now, but I really wanted to follow the comic. And as soon as you open it up, it has a great vintage feel to it. Uh, some of this art here reminds me of Sam Keith, but not with watercolor. So that's interesting. So there's two different stories in here. And I imagine that none of them are going to end well for whoever's in them. And you got this cute purple thing that's really not that cute. And I wonder if he's going to eat people or something. Definitely looks like it's an eat people situation. And then got a little bit of black and white at the back. Oh, I believe that this, this is actually from Dark Ride. Yeah, that's a little promo for Dark Ride at the back. So, but yeah, so Creep Show number one. J this is the jumping on point and oh Paul Dini's name's up in here so that's interesting so I'm looking forward to seeing where this goes um, and experiencing this series I hope that it has some really cool horror moments um, this guy is $3.99 cover price you know, brand new comic it might be a fun time I think that this one is going to be a good read However, because I went to Rubber Chicken Comics, I cannot buy just one comic. It's like eating just one Lay's or one Pringles. You need to you need to look around and find more stuff to buy because that store has so many little nooks and crannies with things in it. And so I went beneath one of the tables and they had a whole section of graphic novels for $5. So what did I get? I got Frank Miller's Sin City, The Hard Goodbye. Let's see if I can get this in focus. There it is. And uh, this is the, the main story with Marv showing up. So it's Sin City. It's bound real nice. If you've seen the movie, you kind of know the story. If you've been following comics for any amount of time, you probably know what's going to go on in here. If you've been in a comic store in the, like, late 90s early 2000s you've seen Marv in the electric chair the action figure uh, so this guy had a $17 original price and five bucks so it can't go wrong add this to the collection I'm definitely gonna haunt their trade paperback area a little more now knowing that they have actual good books hidden under there so I got this one what else did you get, Harry? I hear you asking. <laughs> well, I got more Sin City. The, this is the third volume, I believe, which is The Big Fat Kill. And, you know, again, it's it's Sin City, so it's going to be what it... It's going to be that cool, straight-up black-and-white art, and it's going to tell a, you know, deep, dark, gritty, noir story. And I think that this is this may actually be take a lot of elements from the movie Sin City 2. Or, or Sin City 2 takes a lot of elements from this particular one. Because a lot of that look, looked like Sin City 2. So I've never actually read any of the comics. I'm just familiar with them through the movies. And um, you know, do, do be aware that these are semi-adult books. There is, there is a rated M for Mature, I believe. And uh, this this was interesting. So a $17 cover price was available at Savers for $3.99, <laughs> sold at uh, Rubber Chicken for five bucks. Which I mean, I don't feel bad about this to this because this to this to this <laughs> it seems reasonable. So what else? What else? What else? The Crow, Flesh and Blood, James Vance, Alex Maliv, 
this looked interesting. I collected the Image Crow series a while ago. I never read any of the original Crow from James O'Barr. And I'm looking forward to reading something that was published at least sometime within the time period that James O'Barr's work was done. Um, so this one has some slight damage on it, which was not a big deal because once again, five dollar book. Um, I'll take I'll take a book for five dollars. Uh, this one is from 2004, so that's, that's going to be around. Uh, poof. Yes, I was going to say that's actually going to be around the image series. I'm wondering if this might have been something that they did uh, to get the copyright back or something like that. Because this is a dark horse book. So, but now of interest, these guys. Mouse Guard, Labyrinth and Other Stories. Mouse Guard, Labyrinth and Other Stories. These are the hardcovers from Free Comic Book Day from a few years back. So, let's see, this is 2012, 2012, 2014. And I really enjoy Mouse Guard. I love the art of Mouse Guard. I've dreamed of playing the role-playing game. It's just kind of expensive to get into. And this has the nice nameplate for the for the book and it has boop 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 yep so yeah beautiful beautiful art from david peterson where we're actually getting to see that his little world of mice and, and rabbits and all that and then they also have some stuff it has a short story from labyrinth and a couple of their other books yes here as well you know, same same production value. Now this was done for Free Comic Book Day, which is definitely saying something because this is a whole production that was just given away. And now that I'm looking at this one, I think that I actually might this might actually be the one that I already have, and I'm not sure. I'll have to take a look in that collection. But long and short, these two um, I'm seeing them going online for like twenty bucks each. They were in the $5 box. I got them for free. So, and I assume it's because they were free comic book day. And the guy at the shop was like, hey, you stop in enough. These are for you. So, so wait, there's one more. Uh, as you may know, I do play tabletop war games. And I've been playing Grimdark Future at a local store. And I took some time to do a zine for the group. And so I had done this. So our local store is Tiger's Eye Games. So I called it Tiger Tales, Grimdark Future Zine. Uh, the art is by one of my friends, Tiet. And I commissioned him this as well as a orc. And so all I did is I, I put together a cheapy zine, which for some reason did not print the back side of the front page, but hey, this is what it is. And I've got my story, another, another of my, I've, I've got my introduction, my story, a story that was written by one of the other players, some nice clip art in here another story by me and yet another story by me so uh, what happened was I had put together a contest at this at for our group to see who would write the best lore and there was one other person that participated and then I threw together three stories so that I could put this together and um, I have this nice, I did this, <laughs> I'm commenting, complimenting myself. I have this nice thing. I also did this on the back, just to give a cool little back art sort of thing. But anyways, so I threw this together. It's really kind of like a neat little thing. And I encourage people that, you know, if you're a creative type, to actually do your creative stuff. So I'm going to go ahead and bring us to the top to say goodbye and share my sort of final thoughts. Okay, so that is the book haul for October. 
and there was quite a bit in there. So getting more, uh, so what I found is with DCBS, I'm able to get more for less. So even though those things were cover price, like eight bucks each, the, um, the Batmans, they actually weren't that bad because uh, we get like 30% off through DCBS versus the 10 or 20 that you usually see at local stores. Which, of course, some of that's eaten up by shipping, but, you know, what are you going to do? Um, so anyways, one thing I wanted to talk about today before I say goodbye is your creativity. And I'm going to just lean back right into the sun. That's going to go thermonuclear on me. There we go. There you go. That's better. Now kind of dark, but what are you going to do? So I'm going to talk about your creativity and feeding your creativity because that's one of the things that I'm all about. And I just want to take a minute to encourage you and you know anyone that you may want to share this with or you know uh, anyone that you really care about is to actually follow your creative muse. See what it is that you love to do and make sure that you do it. And not only that, but do it with your heart and do it with all of your gusto. So for me, I really enjoy writing. That's one of my passions. Right now I'm working on a project called Mask Man, which I'm hoping to get out by the end of the month. And I really have loved working on it. And I feel good about getting near the end of it. I had showed my wife Saz the story and her when she read it she said it's all right. <laughs> it, it that that was tough for me to take. She didn't mean anything bad by it, but I I wanted it to be good or great, not all right. So I sort of took a look at the story and I talk to her about some of what her feelings were because she's she's sort of my first editor and she sort of she, sort of she said the way it ended was a little confusing okay I I had to sort of I immediately raged to myself and then I tried to explain it to her and I realized I'm not going to be there to explain to a reader what my motivation was and what I think's going on here. So I needed to work on it more. And my choice was either I could, A, just throw the whole thing aside and say F it and eventually get back to it at another point, or B, I could just grow up and do it. And that's what I did. I chose to just grow up and do it. So I sat down, I started writing some more, clarifying the ending, giving it a little bit more of a thrilling conclusion, bringing it where it needs to be instead of where I was happy enough for it to be. So the way I had it end originally was sort of artsy and sort of open and that sort of thing. It, it wasn't the kind of ending that most people would expect given the rest of the story. The rest of the story, it has a very traditional horror Halloween-y feel to it. And then to end it on sort of an avant-garde character exploration note really didn't make a ton of sense. It's sort of like some of those 80s horror movies that always end with a sort of... I keep using sort of today... It was, one of the, it was like one of those 80s horror movies where the ending is surreal and the ending is more well you believed it was real the whole time so it was real so you just had to stop believing it and whoever was writing this was on a lot of coke <laughs> uh ending so you know like it, it had it, it was it was jarring because it just stopped and while it made sense if you read it well, it doesn't make sense that it needs to be studied 
<laughs> to get the right right ending or to get the right vibe for the ending. So what I did is I, I just sort of took a look at it and I said, well, what would I be looking for if I read this and I wasn't happy with how it ended? And so I started working on that. And now it just seems like a better story. So that said, and this thing really is not in super crisp focus. So that said, I really want to just encourage you folks. So if you like writing, write. Share it with somebody or somebody's, and get honest feedback. And if that honest feedback is telling you it's terrible, don't stop. Just keep going because you need that to grow. So one of the things that we're, we sort of learn in life is that everything happens for a reason. And that just sounds cliche and terrible. And especially when you tell that to somebody who's in mourning or somebody who's just had a recent loss or something like that. But there is a degree of validity in that, in that there's a lesson to be learned in everything. Sometimes the lesson's a really hard one. Sometimes you learn how resilient you are, which you don't want to learn. Sometimes you'll learn how much you've taken for granted, which is another lesson you don't want to learn because those usually involve loss and pain and you don't you know typically you don't want to experience those things and uh, other lessons we learn are more necessary how we can get along with other people how how someone's personality might challenge me and how i can work through it and where we can find common ground, and where we can't, and where I just draw a line and say, I'm done. That's a lesson for me. Now, what did I learn through my experience with Mask Man is that I don't write with the hand of God. Very few people do. I have not a terrible time with critique, but critique can still really hurt me, particularly when it comes, when, who it comes from. And I need to work on that because those are the people I need to listen to. Those are the people that I really need to hear actual critique from, particularly with any of my writing projects. Because if I don't hear that, I can't grow and I can't change, and I can't improve. So, while at first I get all spiky, and why'd you this, and why'd you say that, and how, how dare you? <laughs> you know, I didn't quite say that, but I might as well have. You know, just say, just say, you know, like, I'll, well, you know, I, I worked on this. Can't you at least say you liked it? <laughs> no, because it, it, if, if she said I like it, but didn't like it, what, what's the point? That's just feeding my ego. Ego doesn't need to be fed. Ego, I think, needs to be starved a little bit. And uh, that's sort of the lesson that was learned is listen better which is a lesson all of us can use especially when it comes to communication always listen more because that's the most vital part of communication all right so this has gone on for quite some time and got a little deep and introspective for a comic book haul video so if you are looking for more content whether it be reviews of comics, whether it be more haul videos, more music is coming soon, more uh, gameplay videos are coming soon, more No Fuss Gus is coming soon. But if you want more sit down, here's Harry's head talking to me videos, let me know. 
if you want to like have just these discussions let me know that's cool if you if you have something you want to discuss about <laughs> let me know but uh long and short don't forget to like comment subscribe share the videos we now have a community tab that's available so if you want to fart around on that go for it see what that's like i have all of one post up there that giacomo put up and there'll probably be more but we'll see what happens when it happens all right so we will catch you guys on the flip side have a wonderful wonderful rest of october a safe and happy halloween and i look forward to seeing you guys again after thanksgiving for my november haul of comics all right thanks have a great day.